Do you feel as if freedom is under attack, and if so, how? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, freedom is written in our Constitution. Those are our freedoms. Those are our God-given rights, right? And if we don't have them, then no, we're not free. If we can't speak our minds and uh, um, let people know how it is that we feel and what we're experiencing, then what, what do we have? We don't have a voice. We don't have uh, the ability to express ourselves. And without that, the rest of it, the, you know, doesn't even matter. I full heartedly agree. So that's why, as I'm sure, you would join me in opposing book bans and bills that prohibit the discussion of certain topics in schools. Yeah? Where do you feel that freedom is being challenged specifically? Uh, well, people who speak out about uh, this shot, uh, masquerading as a vaccine are being shut down. Doctors are, uh, you know, people who call themselves activists, they're being shut down. Good grief. Because yeah, nothing goes wrong when your medical misinformation kills hundreds of thousands of people. Is that your best example, dude? I mean, if you, if you go against what the media or the government uh, wants you to believe, then they shut you down. They don't want you to speak. Notice how he isn't very specific, using broad and vague terms like the government and the media, allowing someone to read into what their definition of that is. That is how we see our freedoms being challenged or being threatened, okay? Because while we might disagree on things, I should be able to feel how I feel about it and express how I feel about it. And how is the government taking that away from you? Did Congress pass a bill banning you from mentioning certain words? Or did President Joe Biden sign an executive order mentioning that you cannot vocalize your views? The difference is that the people, I would say, uh, from my own opinion, the people that don't feel like their freedoms are being challenged are the ones that are in agreement with whatever uh, the government or whatever the media is bringing them. Wow, Buster, you make it sound like all of government and all media is on the same page. It's not like we have political parties or different news outlets. Seriously, this guy has the biggest victim complex that I've ever seen. And also that is definitely a choice to wear your sunglasses, not only on top of your ball cap, but also upside down. <laughs> And there are so many MAGA people out there just like this. So let's talk about cancel culture and freedom of speech. And I'm gonna be giving you two different examples as well as doing a critical thinking exercise towards the end of this video. And there's no better place to start than with the infamous Congress Karen, Marjorie Trader Green. Recently, she complained that prominent airport bookstores like Hudson News rejected her new book from being sold on their shelves. So shocked Marjorie Taylor Green reposted Donald Trump Jr.'s post saying, censorship, Hudson Books refuses to carry America First offers. They refuse to carry winning team pub offers like Judge Janine and Carrie Lake and now they're refusing Marjorie Taylor Green at airport bookstores. And she was so shocked about this. But what I'm shocked about is the fact that Marjorie Trader Green wrote a book. Has she even read one? I wonder if she hired a ghost author to actually do that. Now, conservatives are going to be eager to claim that this is cancel culture and that this is an infringement upon their freedom of speech. But notice how this is not the government or the media restricting her book from being sold. It's a private business that can choose whether or not they want to carry her book on the shelf. But Marjorie Taylor Greene has nobody to thank but herself. Since she's been a huge proponent of book bans, she's been using her power as an elected congressperson to co-sponsor legislation with ousted Representative George Santos, my ex-boyfriend, just kidding, <laughs> like HR 863, which prohibits schools from allowing books on shelves that mention the existence of LGBTQ people. So now that your book is being restricted, do you then think it's a problem? I mean, that kind of goes to the mantra that conservatives only vote on things that benefit them, or a lot of 
of Democrats will vote for policies that help everyone, but that's besides the point. Also, it's hilarious because she is very much projecting and criticizing what she's actually doing herself because she's the one that's putting forward and co-sponsoring legislation to ban other books. And then she cries when her book gets silenced by a private business, notably not the government. I mean, the irony is so rich, but I guess conservatives don't feel shame or um, any sort of regret about their blatant hypocrisy. It's part of their brand at this point. Now, the second example is social media. Oftentimes, conservatives will post a whole bunch of hateful, bigoted, and prejudiced things on social media and then catch feelings as soon as they are called out on that prejudice, claiming that they are victims of cancel culture and that they are being silenced when other people, other users are like, hey, maybe don't use those words to describe LGBT LGBTQ people or trans people or non-white people. And it's funny because notice how it's not the government passing bills saying that you can't say certain words over social media. Notice how it's not their buddy, their friend, their favorite person in the world, Joe Biden, signing an executive order saying what can or cannot be said on social media. In fact, they just started to face the repercussions of breaking the terms of service or the community guidelines. And then after they sign saying that they will agree to them, they they break them and then they whine about the consequences of breaking that agreement. And then they like to blame the government or the media. But it's ironic. You know who's actually trying to ban the speech, the certain discussion of topics? Florida Republicans. You all know the infamous don't say gay bill. Well, if you look specifically into that bill, it says, quote, to prohibit the discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity. And they were often saying, oh, well, it's only for K through three. Well, no, they've extended it all all the way through 12th grade. And now Ron DeSantis, Meatball Ron, is trying to extend that to all businesses in Florida. Proving why you should never go there. <laughs> And as I said earlier, let's do a critical thinking exercise. Let me first note that freedom of speech is a double-edged sword. You have the freedom of speech to say a lot, but freedom of speech does not mean that you are free from the consequences of that speech. For example, if you yell fire in a crowded theater, leading to a whole bunch of people rushing out, then being trampled and then dying in that frenzy, your speech has consequences for public safety. If you are online and you say something homophobic racist, transphobic, mocking a disabled reporter, maybe engaging in some white supremacy. Thanks, Elon. Yeah, you are going to be held accountable. You're going to face the consequences of that speech by breaking those terms of service and the community guidelines for saying those things. Fox News had the freedom of completely just lying to the American people, saying the election was stolen. But their freedom of speech had consequences because Dominion voting systems filed a lawsuit that made them pay almost almost $1 billion in a defamation suit. So your freedom of speech has consequences. And what I find ironic is that these people like to cry as soon as they face consequences. They break the rules and then complain. Notice how it's not the government enforcing those rules. It's not the media enforcing those rules. It's private businesses, Hudson Books, social media platforms, Twitter X or TikTok. They have the rights to completely silence you if you break their terms of service and community guidelines. So conservatives are so much like toddlers where they will literally cry as soon as they break the rules and then they face the consequences. So when it comes to freedom of speech and cancel culture, what's so ironic is that they refuse to look inwardly and actually question whether what they are saying their freedom of speech is something that needs to be said. Yes, you have the right to call me words and be homophobic in the comments, go right ahead. But you should, think about whether you should say that. Yes, you have the freedom of say it, but should you? That's where the critical thinking comes in. My name is Scott Johnson. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button to Rebel HQ. And you can also find more of me on my YouTube and on my TikTok, which are both in the description box below. I do a morning live show every morning in the week, uh, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time on TikTok. It's a morning news live where I can give you just the rundown of all the news. So you definitely want to go and check it out. And please make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't so you can see more from amazing hosts like me. I'll see you in the next video.